Fuck me. I never talked to him. Fuck. I should really do that right now. What am I doing with my life? Also, I wonder if the guy's on the main throne yet. I don't see him there. All that unkindled, and a seeker of lords. Yes, I am. I am Ludlith of Corland. Look not in bewilderment, as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child cause. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. So this man linked the fire at one point. That's his whole claim to fame. No style of our purpose. Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is. I became a lord of Cinder. I may be but small, but I will die a colossus. Now, now, do not be away over long. So yeah, that's all the span says for now. We'll get back to him later. But as you can probably tell from what he said, the main plot of this game so far is we need five lords on these thrones so that they can give up their lives so we can link the fire and beat the game. That's the plot in a nutshell. Is there more to it than that? Of course there is. Okay, this guy's... Oh, he's here! Mm. Unkindled, are we? And fast on the trail of the lords absconded? Then these red eyes are for you. Use them to pillage embers and briefly heighten your strength for your duty. What else are unkindled ashes good for? <laughs> you say anything else? Pillage embers for briefly heightened strength for your duty. What else are unkindled ashes good for? <laughs> anything else? Pillage embers. Nope. Well Doesn't even say his name yet. Because I can't remember what his name is, but I think he's the same dude that you get to fight if you go through an optional path in the game. So you could read here, like, the description, like, the names of all the bosses you're going to be fighting. So you're going to be fighting Lothric. We're not going to be fighting this guy because he's already on the throne, but... Nude left the Exiled. This guy here, St. Aldrich of the Deep. That was Sludge Man coming out of the coffin. I had a lot of trouble with him my first time. Until I learned, you know, the basic strategy. And got incredibly lucky. Aldrich Heston bullshit. Watchers of the Abyss, I had a lot of trouble with them too. Like, they're not particularly fun to fight. Jorm the Giant, easily the easiest of the four, bo of the four main bosses. Like, bar nine. Like, I'll, I'll say right now, like, how many deaths I've had roughly on each of these. Like, your two deaths. Like, once I learned the gimmick, fucking easy fight. Like, Abyss Watcher's probably around, like, ten. It took me an hour. That guy up there. Prince Lothric. Uh, I don't remember exactly how, but it was over ten. Like, that fight is tough, and I only seen this a second phase twice. Thankfully, I beat his second phase my second time through it. But, like, that's an nerve fucking fight. This guy here, easily 15 plus. Aldrich, like, until I learned, like, I had to actually look up what his resistances were to beat him. Because my deep axe was doing shit. Like, Aldrich is the point in the game where I had to switch weapons. Because the deep axe wasn't cutting it anymore because he's resistant to dark. But he was weak to fire, so I made myself a fire sword, and he was a complete chump after that. I also made the lightning spear, and the lightning spear actually didn't do me any papers at all, because I picked the wrong spear to enchant. Oh. Like, 
that's just a note to sell for this game. Like, don't choose, like, player versus player weapons as your main weapons for player versus, like, enemies. Because player versus player weapons only work against our player. They do a lot of damage. They're basically more for stun locking and fooling people. And not so much for you know, trying to do significant damage to bosses. So don't do that to yourself. If you get like something that's like a dual wield weapon, keep in mind the damage value is the attack of both hands combined. It's, it's not like both weapons are doing that much damage. It's each weapon if you attack at the same time did that much damage. And that's a lesson I had to learn the hard way. Actually, fuck, what am I doing? I need to go use that jail key. That's important. Tower on the wall we go. Oh boy. So we'll go visit our friend in the jail cells. I mean, I bought some cracked red eye orbs, but I'm playing offline because if my frame's under 20, it's just going to kick me. Because that's what the game does to protect from lag, I guess. Which, to be honest, they kind of need to do. But at the same time, I wish I could play online. It just sucks that I can't. I've never had this bad of a frame rate problem for any of the other Souls games. To the point where I have to actually reduce my resolution to get a good uh, frame rate that isn't complete ass. And like, this is still like, less than 20. But then again, I'm in like, the laggiest areas in the game. Move on, please. Next, uh... <laughs> that was almost your whole life bar. And that's why I like the deep axe early on. It's really fucking good. So this guy here is tricky. You have to watch him because this is a room filled with exploding barrels. If I had walked through here, I would be dead. Throwing knives, those are useful for luring enemies to you. It's about the only thing they're good for. This guy's punching the wall. I almost found that kind of funny. Mail breaker, I'll never use that. And the jail cells. No one coming behind me? We're good. What's up, buddy? Ah. You're no jailer, are you? No, no, you're from far away. And judging by the bell, you must be some of that unkindled ash. Remarkable. If that's true, then I have a favor to ask. Below the high wall is a musty little town. Not the home of any lord, just a, a very old settlement of undead. An old woman, Loretta, lives there. Please, give her this ring. I, I'm not asking for charity. In fact, in fact, if you do this for me, I'll be sure to repay you in kind. I, I may be a petty thief, but I've more wits than most royalty. What do you say then? Huh? Sure. Very well. I humbly place my faith in you. I am Grey Rat of the Undead Settlement, and I. <laughs> Promise to assist you. I still not fail the way Give he says that. Give this ring to Loretta at the base of the high wall. Do your part, and I'll do mine. So my game, I completely fucked up this NPC's whole side quest path as he teleports to Firelink. Like, there's a few NPCs in this game where if you fuck up their side quests, they just end up dead, and there's just nothing you can do. So I'm pretty sure I accidentally got him killed. Which is kind of a problem because I wanted to check out some of his wares, but whatever. Not much I can do about it. 
There's also a door over here. It's locked. I'll just check it to confirm. I'll get the key for that much later on. Like, it'll take a while. But eventually I'll get the key from someone and then he'll be good to go. So I think I'm just going to go this way because it's about the same distance as the shortcut. And I'm not even going to bark by anything. I'm just going to do speedrun tactics from past everything. Let that man behind me transform. Which actually I've never seen the transformation before. It's quite the thing. Are you not going to transform? There he goes. Let him uh, do his thing. Yeah. That's why I kill that guy fast. Because I'm not dealing with that. Now thankfully his leash point seems to be up there. He can't actually be lured down here. So like I was saying earlier, this is where we were before. There's this guy here. And Wayne Knight should be patrolling over here somewhere. But where are you walking? Oh, he's walking this way. Maybe. No, no, he's going the other way. Nope, fuck it, I'm fighting you. Oh, he has like a five hit spin to win. See, so, yeah, he's not overly tough, but that could have went very poorly. And he actually ended up not dropping anything, which is kind of bad luck. Because he'll usually drop either his armor or the wing spear. Or not wing spear, but wing knight halberd. Wing spear is something else. Last drop by the spear guys who are on death. Well, I did not have a shield up because I was falling. Guess I kind of deserve that one. So here's where the leg gets real. I'm going to have to be particularly careful in this area. Uh, actually, I'm going to back up a little bit. Change equipment. Actually, before I do anything else, I kind of, I kind of have to take a bathroom break, so... Thankfully, I'm playing offline, and I can just do this whenever. Anything here? No. So, I'll be right back in, like, two minutes. Okay. So, we're right back from that. Sorry about that delay. Like I said, I had to let my dog out. Uh, hope my audio is synced. I'll test that. Uh, I walk on to. Ah, there goes one. Exactly what I want. One. Ah, one, one uh, back seven, one hack. That's all it needs. So I'm not going to bite him right now. I'm going to go up here instead. Hello, buddy. Come at me, bro. You're the idiot. And now you're dead for it. New stern. Probably never use that. Lothric Knight Sword and some gauntlets. I actually never got the gloves in my error game. Not sure if I want to risk equipping them, but it's a thing I can do.
Four hits. I am glad I upgraded this axe. All right. So we have this big dumb door over here. Or we have this guy over here. First thing I'm going to go for this guy over here. Got him. That was kind of risky, actually. I am very aggressive. And you're dead. Very lucky you had exactly 10 health left. All right. So I believe he's just looking at that guy. Didn't lose everything, right? Yeah. We'll see more of those very later, very much later in the game. For now, we've got this room over here, which is another pretty leggy room in the game. <coughs> Sadly. got a kind of nice look to it. It looks very Bloodborne-ish, actually. Ah, the wait has been long, unkindled one. I am Emma, High Priestess of Lothric Castle. Allow me to speak frankly. You will not find the Lords of Cinder here. They have left, gone, to their journey homes, converging at the base of this castle. Head to the bottom of the High Wall. Forge on through the great gate and raise this banner to proceed. Key item. This farewell gift is for you. It is the insignia of an old covenant. If you fear trespassers, dark spirits drawn by the embers, then etch this upon your heart, and the old concord will beckon noble blue sentinels. To hunt these foul spirits. We have the Blue Covenant. Unkindled one. Head to the High Wall's base. Go through the Great Gate and raise this banner to proceed. But beware. The dog keeps a close eye on things. The vile watchdog of the Boreal Valley. Anything else? Unkindled one. Go through but the vile. So yeah, you'll probably notice there's a ladder above her that has not descended yet. That'll be way later in the game. Like, that's, like, last 30% uh, of the game territory up there. And sadly, the last 30% of the game is about as laggy as it is in here, because same area. And as a matter of fact, it actually gets worse up there, and there's a chance it could crash. Because it's crashed a couple times for me up there. That's a damn shame. There's really nothing I can do about that. What happened to the air guy here? There's usually two. Yeah, there's usually two guys and... One went away. The fuck? That's weird. Alright, we're, we're now basically in first boss territory. Now this guy I beat my first try, he's not overly difficult. But I worry about that because this guy does have some nasty shit. So cutscene time. Yeah, this this guy can be particularly nasty, so I'm gonna have to be very careful. And really man, I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious than what I was with uh Udix Gundir. Because Gundir, you really need to jab into him. When this guy gets to halfway, you need to uh, really uh, take note of what he's doing and keep a watch. But never back off. This, this guy is the guy you don't want to give space. But at the same time, you have to be careful of that because, uh, yeah. So, yeah, he's stupid easy to dodge.
to, he does have a few slams, and he's already dead. Like I said, the main reason I was worried is because he does, like, fucking blanket ball charges and shit. And that's, like, the main worry of that fight. Is if you get combos unlocked by those, you're screwed. But he is super fucking easy air-wise. He just fucking... Chunks take out of the fight's It's not even a challenge, really. And we have a message. Peer over the cliff and hold up the bear. Gladly. Here we go. First area done. Like, it's weird that the second boss of this game is harder than the tutorial boss. Like, I'm not sure why. Like, he takes way more damage than he really should. And I'm not sure if it's just because I chose the right weapon. But I've seen other people do this fight, and they do almost the same amount of damage. It's... Maybe the deep axe is really just overpowered. Maybe this boss is just really weak. Like, I, I don't understand how people have trouble with that boss. The only trouble you'd have is if you're being a coward, backing off. Like, other than that, he is... Like, it's like any other giant boss in the Souls game. You get in close, you can dodge pretty much all his shit. Like, he's easier than Taurus Demon. In that sense, because Taurus Demon at least has, like, something that can hit. Like, between his legs and behind him. That guy, I don't even think, has that. Like, I mean, he has his blanket balls, which you actually have to roll, even if you're under him. But that's it. So we're on the high wall of Lothric now. Grab some souls. There's the undead settlement. That's actually a much bigger area than the Lothric we just came from. Which, I mean, saying this is a much bigger area is kind of hilarious when you consider we just came from... That little city up there. That being said, we were only in the lower half of it. We're going back for the upper half much later in the game. You can be sure of that. So someone's laying dogs through. Well, that happens. I'm going to run this way. Knocked away when they're in the animation. Oh, my game almost crashed. I've actually never had the game crash in this particular area before, so thankfully it didn't. Oh, someone's breathing. Please grant me death. Undo my shackles. <laughs> I guess this one's alive. Oh. Oh, then it's true. The champion of Ash, as I live and breathe. To be in your presence is a great honor. I am Yol of Londor, a pilgrim, as you can see, only somehow I failed to die as was ordained. Well, perhaps my calling lies elsewhere. Say, champion of Ash, how does the idea of taking me into your service strike you? I was once a sorcerer. Surely I can be of use. Of course I'll accept. This is the air guy I fucked up his side quest. Oh, I am honored, truly. I should be dead. Yet you have granted me purpose anew. I, Yol of Londor, do solemnly swear myself to you. So yeah, this guy, he fuck up his side quest. It's far more punishing than Grey Rat. Fucking up Grey Rat, you lose his little shop thing, which is mostly for, like, weapon drops and armor drops off of enemies and areas. So that you don't have to actually go out and grind them yourself. Which is cool and neat, but not really necessary. If you fuck up that guy's side quest, like, if you fuck up yours, not only does he die, which he dies anyway after a certain point in the game. But if you fuck his up, you lose the ability to have a magic guy for the rest of the game. So if you're doing a sorcery build and you fuck his up, 
you are fucked forever. It's it's brutal. I'm not a fan of that. Like I've never seen like something that punishing in a Souls game before. Where you can actually lose the ability to learn new sorceries. Because you not only do you lose him, but the person who would replace him never shows up. Like, it's super fucking brutal. I know Dark Souls 2 never had anything that brutal. Dark Souls 1 never had anything that brutal. Like, I mean, obviously you could accidentally kill out NPCs in our game and lose them forever, but... You know, outside accidentally swing so you get them. Like, nothing is that brutal. Where you, you can just not do a side quest and lose your ability to learn new magic. And you'll still be getting magic tomes, but you won't have anyone to give them to to learn magic. It's fucking terrible. And, like, that's like the one thing where I'm like, I'm still getting magic tomes even though the sorcery guy is dead. Where's the next one? Oh, I fucked up his side quest by not doing something, so guess what? I don't get sorceries. Which is fine, because I wasn't at magic build, but at the same time, I just had like seven key items in my ever teaching magic. Seven, look free. But still, that's fucking terrible. So we're in this area now. I really should probably level up and spend those souls, but before I do that, there's something I want to grab. These guys aren't really strong. And they all look like Grey Rat. That's like the one thing. So here we have a corpse. Knock it down. Take a back step so I don't fall off. Is there a guy around this corner? Of course there is. What a beautiful sound. Repair powder, which I never used all game because nothing ever came close to breaking. Like, my axe right now is still well over a quarter durability. Like, it's about 80%. And I mean, I could have rested that bonfire and just restored it. That, that's how, like, dumb the durability is in this game. So he's done. I mean, his little ambush never happened. And there's this guy. And you're done too. Easy. So far there's been nothing particularly difficult in this area. Safety save. Just because my game might feel like crashing. That I mean recording this game might actually lead to more crashes, so I am gonna be particularly careful when it comes to this. So here's the air area where fire bombs come in handy. Because explosive barrels. So I just need to line this up correctly. Free dead. And no one notices. It's the nice thing about explosive barrels in this game. You blow them up and no one notices. I don't know how no one notices, but you know what? If they want to be dumb, they can be dumb. So run back here real quick. Grab this. It's just souls, but you know. I use them. And the mage noticed. The mage with the giant mace. There's the fire attack. You get grabbed by that. I'm not sure how much damage it does. Let's not find out. Yeah. 
So these mages can be really deadly. If you read their attacks wrong, there's a very good chance you get hit by that mace, and that mace does a lot more damage than you want it to. Parker Gloves. That's the shard, that's the main reason for being here. Rubbish. Which I haven't actually found a use for in this game. It's not like Dark Souls 1 rubbish where you can give it to Seath and get... Not Seath, but fuck, what's his name? Kingseeker Framped. You know, you give it to Kingseeker Framped to get like 200 souls a piece for it. So yeah, that's done. And I might need to leave like right now, so... I'm gonna use my bone. Go back to the shrine, and we're gonna end this session after I level up. Sound fair? Welcome home. Speak very well. Then take no. Okay, I'll need to remember to give that Loretta's bone to a uh, gray rat and let him know that whoever it was is dead. But you know what, such from that, I think that's a pretty productive first session for me. Some level ups. Oh yes, and yes to shard. So we've got a few things to do when we come back, but that'll be it for, for me and uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And hopefully I continue this series, but no promises, because if stuff starts crashing, then I might just can it. So I'll see you guys later.